Welcome to Ignite Your Confidence for women in leadership who want to speak up and stand out. I'm your host, Karen Laus. Here you'll get all of the tips and tools that you need to stand out with unshakable confidence. Let's dive into today's episode. Well, I'm so excited to be here with Jessica. And what I want to share about her, first of all, is that she is quite an inspiration. I am always amazed at people that have bootstrapped their way to be successful. And not only is she financially successful, which is great, but I think the bigger part is her huge heart and what she is doing for women. So I want to welcome you, Jessica, for being here and I'd love to hear more about you. Well, Karen, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be with you and you are an inspiration to me as well. So it truly is a pleasure to be with you and your audience. So a little bit about me, I, I'm a Southerner at heart. I grew up in Tennessee, grew up pretty um, meek, you know, a pretty meek raising. Uh, my parents were both really hard workers and they instilled a great work ethic in me. But growing up, I saw struggle and I knew that I wanted my circumstances to be different than that. I'll be honest, no one in my upbringing really fed into me a sense of belief about myself. It was more, you'll do, you'll probably do all right. <laughs> that was kind of the mentality in my, in my home. I was following the footsteps of twin siblings who were both brilliantly smart and super talented in sports and all the things. And I was just kind of getting by. So as I got into my teen years, I had this entrepreneurial spirit about me, but I really didn't know how to bring it alive and, and make it come to fruition. And through a series of events, I decided to leave my hometown and move across the country and honestly against my parents' blessing. And so they gave me kind of an ultimatum, if you will, leave the, you know, leave the state of Tennessee and you're on your own and stay and we'll help you as much as we can. But I knew that I was supposed to spread my wings. And so there were no hard feelings, but I did choose to kind of venture out on my own. And it was the hardest thing I ever did. And it was absolutely the best thing I ever did. If I'm being really honest about it, I don't know that I thought my parents would stri strictly stick to the no help. I thought for sure they would help me here and there, but they really stuck to it. And so it forced me to figure out who I was and what I was capable of and what I wanted my life to look like. And so through that, I ventured into um, starting businesses and several failed businesses barely got my degree. I went to seven colleges to get one bachelor's, five of them community colleges because that's all I could afford. And through a series of failed, um, failed ventures, I stumbled upon a really great opportunity, started that business. And the rest is kind of history from there as far as my, my business story. So um, met my husband, married him. We've been married 25 years. I have four children, a big span. I've got one in college, seventh grader, uh, sophomore in high school, and also a first grader. So I've got a big span in there. And so I'm a mama and a business owner, and I love helping women chase their dreams, uh, going against the norms of society, because that's truly what I've done. Wow. Thank you for that. Oh my gosh. It, it just amazes me all the things that you're doing. Tell me about your book because you published a book and it's, I love the title. I love the cover and I love what you said about the cover. If you would be open to sharing that with the audience, that would be awesome. Yes. Okay. So the name of the book is I Almost Canceled Showing Up When Fear Tells You to Stay Home. And the truth, I just really wouldn't describe myself as an author if I'm being very open and honest with, with the audience right now, but I really felt like God laid it on my heart to write a book. I knew I had a story to share. I knew that my experience could help others. I have successfully built two multi-million dollar businesses, st starting both businesses and industries that I knew nothing about. And so I knew that if I could share my story, hopefully I could encourage other women to stick their neck out and do the same. But I think that we're in a society that we look at what other women are doing and sometimes we can let it intimidate us. And I am not, um, I'm not an exception to that. You know, I've fallen prey to comparison. I've fallen to prey to what in the world is she doing? I could never do that. And I have some social anxiety. So the title of the book, I almost canceled. I would tell you that about everything in my life, I have a dialogue of how could I get out of this? Why did I say yes to that? 
Maybe I should cancel. I don't deserve to be there. I'm not smart enough. And through the years, I set some good boundaries in place to change that dialogue. And so I showed up even when fear told me I should stay home. And so the book, um, there's a picture of me on the cover of the book, and I kind of look powerful and um, almost like a superhero, if you will. And the funny thing is, is that was a quick snapshot by a photographer, probably two seconds in my life. I do not look like that daily, and I don't feel like that very often. So um, looking at the book, you know, it looks like you've got this powerful person, and behind that powerful, powerful pose is the same scared, nervous, fearful person that most of us are. The only difference is I decided I had to show up. If I wanted to change my circumstances, I had to show up. And in coaching women, if I can just get them to show up, they will be amazed at what they can accomplish. That is so powerful. What, what advice would you give to someone? Because you have accomplished so much and it sounds so easy, just show up. And I know it's not just that easy. I really do. And I know you know that too. But what advice would you give to someone who really is struggling with fear and wanting to cancel and not wanting to show up? What is one thing you would say? Well, I do think that it does start within. And I think that you do have to change the dialogue that you have with yourself. Because when you're canceling, you're telling yourself you're not worth it. When you're not showing up, you're convincing yourself that all the critics were right. And so I would say it does start within. I also think that make sure you're pursuing the right things. Make sure you're not pursuing what society tells you you should pursue, but you're pursuing what you really feel in my opinion, what God has laid on your heart, what you believe is your inner strength. You know, you heard it said, um, your gifts and talents are God's gift to you and how you use them are your gifts to him. And so often I think, especially in this social media world we're living in, we watch what everyone else is doing and we think that's what we're supposed to be doing. So if I could just encourage all women to understand that success looks different for all of us. And your success gets to be yours and mine gets to be mine. And there's room for all of us. So don't let somebody's success intimidate you. Rather, see it as your potential. If she can do it, you can do it. So if you can change that dialogue with yourself, if you can decide, this is what I really feel called to do, and I'm going to show up, even if I stumble through it, even if I don't get it right, even if it doesn't go exactly as planned, I'm worth it. This goal is worth it. If you truly felt called to it, it is worth pursuing. And if I could just get women to understand that, they truly are so amazing and powerful in that space. And that's what I want for them. I feel the same way too. I mean, you and I are so aligned in our <laughs> missions of helping women to step into their confidence and really believe that they can do it. What would be one exercise? So as far as you know, was telling someone that to get over or just to believe in themselves, what is something that a person could do who doesn't? Like, how do you actually do that? Well, I think there are some exercises you could do to really make sure that you are aligned with your priorities, that you're not just doing everything that everyone else is doing. Like, do you understand what your true priorities are? And are you spending your time on that? Are you pursuing what you truly feel called to pursue? I think also for me, I set a no cancellation policy in my life early on. And what I found is if I said yes to the wrong things, it was a pain point and I still showed up to it, but I learned. So I quit saying yes to a lot of the wrong things. I got more disciplined in what I said yes to, but honestly, just having that no cancellation policy, if it's on my calendar, I do it. And if you just set that as a no exception rule, you will start showing up to the right things. And I, I've gotten good at saying yes to the right things because for many years I was just saying yes to everything and then living almost in this regret and dread phase. So I think setting up a no cancellation policy, making sure that you're pursuing the right things, saying yes to the right things. And if you say yes to the wrong things, still show up, you'll learn something, you'll gain from it. You'll be glad you went, but you won't make that mistake over and over. Yeah, that's such a good point. And I love what you said about boundaries, because how often is it, especially as women, that we tend to say yes to things. And then after the fact, we go, oh, why did I do that? And then we become resentful and sometimes even bitter. And yet we seem to have a hard time getting out of the pattern. I always like to tell women that no is a complete sentence. And I would even offer no, thank you. <laughs> it's probably a better one. But isn't it so 
just insightful that we feel like we have to give reasons for why we can't do something. Oh, it's because this, 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 this. And frankly, the details really aren't what matters. It's so much about owning your value and, and prioritizing your time, just like you said. So true. How about going back to your story? Because I know you've got so many great stories. I want to I want to leverage as many as we can. Tell us about a time, because I think now, of course, it's easy. Well, I shouldn't say easy, but for someone to look at you, I, I feel like, for example, it's really easy. You mentioned about comparison and the importance of not doing that. And yet there is something about our human nature that compares ourselves to someone's, let's say, day one versus somebody's day 1000, for example, and how it's so easy to compare ourselves. So the, what I want to ask is, can you offer a story about a time? Because it's easy to look at my point was it's easy to look at you and say, oh, well, she did this. That looked easy for her. But I know it wasn't always easy. So can you tell us a time, drop us into a moment where things were pretty rough and how you overcame them? Maybe a mistake that you made and how mm -hmm. you recovered or something like that. Sure. So my first successful business, I could tell you about many failed businesses before this, but I started a photography business and that company I started with zero knowledge in the photography industry. We contract with hospitals to photograph newborns. And I am from a nursing background. I knew the clinical environment, but I truly knew nothing about photography. So when I started that business, it was a friend's idea, wasn't my idea. And I was really going to just help her market and grow and help her know how to work in the clinical environment and talk to the nurses. Well, I landed a contract faster than I expected. So the next thing you know, I have to go photograph these babies. Well, I had never held a professional camera. I'm learning on the fly. And my very first order happened to be a physician at the hospital. So I needed to impress this guy. So he gets his order and he's calling me. I'm customer service, driving, I'm everything. I'm customer service, shipping, orders, receivables, everything. And I'm driving and he calls me. He said, Jessica, we got our pictures today. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. Do you love them? He said, I do. But oddly enough, um, it, it cuts off the top of my head. And I said, oh, that's just, um, that's just the artistic you know, positioning of it. He said, no, I, I feel like it's more than that. Like it literally cuts at my eyebrows. And I'm like, oh, at your eyebrows? Okay, let me check into it. Well, I didn't know that when I placed an order in, in the lab that I had to position the cropping. I just thought what you saw is what you got. <laughs> so oh it cropped God. right in the middle. There was barely any baby in the picture. Dad's head was cut off to here. And I'm all the while like, no problem at all. We can get this fixed for you right away. And literally I'm sweating bullets because I don't even know what I've done wrong. So it truly oh. is that trial and error. And I know, it, I mean, honestly, in that moment, I wanted to just fade away. I wanted to be like, okay, I'm no good at this. And I don't want to be embarrassed again tomorrow when I make another mistake. But the truth was, I just knew that I, I really took an approach to everything I've done. You can learn it. You can learn it. You can learn it. And that is the truth for all of us. You can learn it and you might make mistakes and you'll get a funny story out of it, but you won't make that mistake again. Oh, goodness. I could tell you all kinds of stories of just... <laughs> Oh, how embarrassing, but you just learn from it and you go out and do it again. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. I, I, I grew up with a really wonderful and also perfectionist mother that wanted everything to be a certain way. And I think that a lot of women have that same tendency of, oh, if it's not perfect, I'm not going to do it. Or, oh, I messed up. And that's to me is such a beautiful message that you have about showing up because to me, the showing up piece is also showing up when things didn't go so well. Yes, yes, it is so true. I'm guessing that's the same for you yeah. too. So tell us about a time when you didn't speak up, but wish that you had. This is something very big in my, certainly my mission is to help women specifically speak with confidence, especially in those times when they're wanting to hold back due to that self-doubt or fear. So I'd love to hear an example from you. Yeah, I'll be honest. I, I've definitely been guilty of wanting to raise my hand in that meeting, but feeling like everyone around me knew more than me or they were further along than me or my input wasn't going to be valuable. And, you know, you've heard that phrase. It's amazing how much you can accomplish when you don't care who gets the credit. 
But the truth is there are circumstances in your life that you do need credit for your great idea. You do need credit because when you are acknowledged in that, it does help you. It does build your confidence. It does maybe propel you in that position in that company. So I think we're telling women the wrong message when we tell them, oh, you're fine. You don't need credit for that. Because yes, the truth is in the, in the ultimate grand scheme of things, maybe the, the betterment of the team is truly is truly the goal. But there are times where we need to speak up. I remember sitting in a board meeting one day and I did feel like I had a great idea and I just didn't have the confidence to raise my hand and speak. And so then we traveled down a path where I didn't really agree with this other a gentleman's idea, and but I let it go and we traveled that path. And, and looking back, my idea was better and my idea might have done better for the organization. And eventually we did, I did share that idea and we did go that route, but we made some grave errors and we made some financial errors in, in chasing this other path. And I just so wish I would have had the nerve to say, could we look at another option here? And I wouldn't have even needed to dispute his option, but why not present my option? And I, I regret not doing that. And I regret not uh, believing in myself enough and also fighting for the organization in that way. So sometimes don't even worry about giving yourself the credit, but do the right thing for the organization. And sometimes the right thing is you speaking up and giving an option, maybe opposite of someone in the room. Thank you. That That's such a good example of really being mindful of your audience. What is best for the company or organization? Because isn't it true that we can get so caught up in our own heads? I know that certainly happened for me of oh my gosh, and I make it all about me. And not that I'm trying to do that, but I think just as humans, <laughs> we tend to have those feelings and that makes it a lot harder. But getting outside of ourselves and thinking, for me too, framing questions that I really love, especially in a situation that feels a little bit uncomfortable or you're not really sure what to do is number one, what is needed here? Yes. And then what is required of me? That's something I learned at a marriage retreat a number of years ago. And I just love those two framing questions because I find that when I'm in the midst of something where I go, oh, what do we do here? That can be a really helpful thing. I love those questions. That's a great idea. Oh, thanks. Well, I would love to hear another story, particularly thinking now about bring us into the moment where you really felt like, I know it might be hard to identify an exact moment, but maybe one of them where you felt like you turned the corner in your confidence, where you really said, oh my gosh, I'm good at this, or I feel confident in what I'm doing or who I am. Yeah, I love that question. So actually in my early nursing career, I was very young and I was under the direction of two other very, very talented surgical nurses. I worked in a, in a surgery office. And so often I just felt like I knew I was the low man on the totem pole and I was okay with that. And I was all about learning and getting better. But there was a point one day that I was in surgery and I knew that I was good at what I was doing. I knew that I was great at patient care. I knew that I was great at assisting that surgeon. But one day I remember the surgeon just looking at me and before he even said what he needed, I, I knew he's gonna ask for this. And he said it and I had it. And he and I kind of had this mutual respect for one another and a, and a nice connection. And I remember just feeling like I feel so good being great at this. And I was proud of myself. I was proud at being great at something. And that confidence in that, in that job really propelled me to reach for a promotion and propelled me to ask for a pay raise that I didn't know that I really would be able to get. And even in that negotiation, just feeling that confidence to be able to say, no, I am good and I bring something to the table here and I'm valuable and you're gonna value me in it. And had I not gotten the raise, had I not gotten the position, I'm not sure that it would have changed much but just having the confidence to walk in and ask for it. Because I think so often when you're new or you're the low man on the totem pole, if that's the way we can put it, sometimes we, we get comfortable in that spot and we stay. We stay in the supporting role. We stay in that. I'm, I'm comfortable just moving at the same pace as the person above me. 
And sometimes you're just as qualified and you bring a lot to the table. So be cognizant of that. I knew the areas in nursing that I needed to improve on, but I also knew the areas that I excelled in. And the areas that I needed improvement, I was willing to work on that. And the areas that I excelled in, I was willing to put myself in that more and more to be able to advance in that position. So I do remember that feeling of like, okay, you, you're you doing good, sister. You've got this. Now, it doesn't mean I didn't make mistakes. I made plenty of them. But it was just such a good feeling to know that he relied on me and that I knew he absolutely could and that he, he wasn't just the surgeon and I was the nurse. It was absolutely, we were a team and I brought a lot to that partnership and that felt great. That's so good. So good. Well, and it reminds me of what you said earlier about the importance of feeling these things and hearing some accolades or whatever it might be, having those experiences that help to build your confidence. And it made me think about the power of celebrating. And that is something that's probably one of my top three values is the importance of celebrating people and yourself and just what has happened because it's so such a good reminder of taking those milestones and saying, I did that and I am really good at this. And I think sometimes we have a hesitancy to do that. And I'm not sure exactly why that is, but to also remember the value of really letting those seeds sow in us of our confidence and helping it to build, I guess, for, for lack of a better, a better term there, just really focusing on and saying those. And I do think that also helps with the self-doubt because that's an exercise that I give to my clients as far as how to overcome it. One of them is to pick three to five people that you love and that are you're close to and ask them what your favorite, their favorite attributes and strengths about you are. And you're smiling. So I'm guessing that you probably I love, think so. I, do. I love that. And, you know, I think sometimes as women, it's even hard to hear, you know, yes. we have a hard time accepting compliments. We have a hard time hearing our strengths. My husband often will say to me, Jessica, just say, thank you. Just say thank you. Because as soon as somebody compliments me, I often, oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. And so I've learned to appreciate what people appreciate in me. And I think that when you can celebrate with someone and for someone and for yourself, it, it helps all of us. It helps all of us. So I do, I encourage women, celebrate every win, big or small. You know, I have a practice where at the end of the day, I do look back over the day and I try to focus on what went well that day because I probably already beat myself up for what didn't go well. Right. So I try to focus on what did go well today and what do I want to draw from that to make sure goes well tomorrow. So I think that as women, we do sometimes have a hard time accepting those compliments and hearing that praise. But if you can get good at celebrating other people's wins and helping them celebrate, then it's amazing how you can come into celebrating your own. And it's, an, I think it's pretty powerful. Well, and to your point, it, it needs to be intentional because if we don't plan it, like you have this, I love that you said you have a practice or, or a ritual at the end of the day, making sure that you do that. And I would recommend that as well for anyone listening. And as we wrap up here, Jessica, would love to know, because my audience is all about tactic, uh, simple strategies that are practical and immediately applicable. So what would you say is the one thing to help anyone build her confidence? Well, Karen, I think they need to be listening to you. That's for sure. <laughs> but honestly, if I think if you just look within and trust your instincts more than you realize, Start changing that negative dialogue in your head to what if, to yes, I can. What if it goes wrong, but what if it goes right? You know, I tell people all the time, don't think about what you can't do. Think about what you can do, because there's always something you can do to move along in your process, to move further or closer to what you want to, want to do and accomplish. So I do think that it is that positive affirmation in your life, surrounding yourself with people who believe in you and want to see you succeed. It's, it's really surrounding yourself with that in your own mind and in the people around you. I truly think that has made a huge difference for me in my life. Being around, they say you um, are the sum of, of your parts, right? You're, you turn out to be the average of the people you spend the most time with. Yes, so exactly. spend time with people who are excited, spend time with people who are confident, Spend time with other women who celebrate other women. You'll be amazed at what that will do for you. So I, I truly think it's positive affirmation. I think it's positive, uh, a positive environment. I think those two things um, will take you a long way. That is beautiful. That's so beautiful. 
Well, one thing that I would add is in the next week, anyone listening, pick one positive affirmation that you could say about yourself that makes you excited and repeat that in the morning seven times right before you wake up and at night seven times right before you go to bed because the research tells us that those are the best times to say those affirmations, but also continue to say it throughout the day. And I would just suggest just spend a week with one affirmation and get good at that over and over and over and over again. And that will help you to solidify it and really receive it as well. So Jessica, I am so happy that you could spend your time with us and congratulations on your book and all of your success. You're such a walking, uh, walking testimony of someone who can make it and not necessarily have a whole bunch of things that you had as a kid that were, what am I trying to say? <laughs> trying to, to, to make it just happen smoothly. Let's put it that way. I feel like against the odds, you really made things happen and you're such an, a wonderful example and an inspiration to me and I know many people. So what I'd love to know is how we can reach you. How can we find you? Thank you, Karen, for that. Yes, I am so, um, I'm honored to be here and I appreciate the time. They can find me at jessicabettencourt.com. They can get my book on Amazon or Audible. If you choose to get it on Audible, I am the voice reading Woo! it, which is so much fun. And um, you can find me on Instagram as jbettencourt1. And now most recently over on Clubhouse as jbettencourt. So yes. find me there. And Karen, thank you for this opportunity. Always a pleasure to get to talk with you. Ah, thank you so much, Jessica. And that's a wrap of another episode of Ignite Your Confidence. I'm your host, Karen Laus. Thank you so much for listening. If you love today's episode, please subscribe and leave a review. It helps other people find the podcast faster, and it certainly helps me. If you're interested in more tips and tools around confidence, please join me over in my Facebook group called Ignite Your Confidence with Karen Laus. Remember, you too can stand out with unshakable confidence. <laughs>